네 말이 맞다. 답지 않아. 정말 나답지 않아. As usual, spoilers for Library of Arena ahead. Xiao is a guest that gets quite a bit of screen time dedicated to her. In addition, she's a character quite far off from most others we see in the city so far with how she reacts to her circumstances and situation. But we aren't supposed to know that yet. In her first appearance, she seems pretty by the book, explaining the severity of the crying children's attack. Other than one moment where Cecil teases Xiao, Xiao 부장님도 솔직하지 못하네요. <coughs> her characterization here reinforces her role as director of Section One. She keeps her cool. She's cautious and very far from what we see her becoming in the future. By this point, she herself has gone through a bit of development already. At the start of her arc, she's someone who's a bit of an ice queen. This doesn't mean she doesn't care about others around her. She's just not given the chance to grieve for most of her colleagues. That's the norm in the city, after all. However, Lowell shows up a complete foil to how Xiao runs her section. Someone who desperately tries to look after all of his colleagues, even openly mourning lost lives. She's perplexed by this. She thought that this attitude would have cost his section their lives, but she was wrong. Lowell was surprisingly good at his job. Odd. She wanted to find out more about him, and that's how their relationship started. The same happened for Lowell as well. He found himself disagreeing with Xiao on almost every possible point. But polar opposites attract, right? Regardless of their differences, after spending so much time together, they truly cherished one another. Things changed after the Liu Association Section 2 had to visit the library. A summary for those that are sane enough to not play Project Moon games, Lowell and his section visited the library to obtain information about the crying children a distortion that was wreaking havoc in V-Corp's nest. They very quickly meet their end in the library and are turned into books. If you read Lowell's book at this point, it's pretty clear that Xiao and Lowell care a lot for one another. In fact, this affection was so large that Lowell and Xiao made a promise. If anything happened to one of them, they wouldn't put themselves at risk. This promise is a pretty large climax for their relationship in my opinion. Don't forget that Lowell is an emotional man. To have suggested this to Xiao himself, it took dedication and understanding. He promised to not put himself into peril after losing her. While he himself emphasizes a lot on how important it is that Xiao doesn't lose herself because of him, one should not undermine the self-control Lowell showcases here. You need to remember that he is a man that openly grieves for his colleagues someone who cherishes the lives of others far more than the average city dweller. This makes Cell breaking the promise so much more meaningful. After Lowell passes in the library, an invitation shows up on Xiao's desk, offering the books of Mei, Cecil, and Lowell. And she decides to break her promise destroying her own life in the process. Though not before one of her men, Chun, calls her out. Xiao 부장님답지 않습니다. 섣불리 결정하실 문제가 아니라는 걸 아시지 않습니까? And he's right. This isn't like her. The Maiden of Iron being swayed by emotions? Someone who would never shed a tear at a colleague's death. Someone who seemed completely heartless. She just couldn't keep going any longer. For once, she couldn't continue 
다만 이런 식으로 일을 그만두는 건 여러모로 좋지 않습니다. And for once, she felt wholehearted and genuine. 그렇다 해도 내가 이 도시에서 이렇게까지 애가 탄 적이 있을까? 이별 때문에 가슴 시렸던 적이 있을까? 진심으로 누군가를 그리워하며 울었던 적이 있을까? 로엘 덕분에 이 마음이 진실하다는 걸알수 있었다. Why did she not appreciate him when he was still on this earth? Why did she only realize how much he meant to her after he passed? That day, before he left her, why did she bite her lip and say nothing? This line of thinking is what accelerates her development by an exceptional amount, and in my opinion, is the main theme for Xiao. Regret. Why was she so afraid? Why didn't she trust her feelings for Lowell? Miris, another one of her men, and a long-term associate, questions her. Lowell's 책을 얻은 후에는 어쩔 건데? 그 다음 정도는 생각하고 일을 버리는 거야? 하, 너 정도 되는 해결사가 이런 상황에서 감정적으로 일을 버리면 어떻게 보이는지 잘 알잖아. 난 이미 마음을 굳혔다. 설득당할 생각도 없고. Her men know that she's going down a foolish path. They know that she's acting irrationally. But still, 저희가 따라갈 건 알고 계십니까? They'll follow her, out of their trust and respect. After all, they've never seen this side of Xiao before. So what else can they do? After entering the library, Angela shows up, and this is one of the most confrontational conversations Angela has for good reason. It's one of my favorite parts in the game and how it's written and translated. Angela points out how objectively this is an ill-advised decision to make by Xiao. 당신들은 알고 있지 않나요? 같은 옷을 입은 손님들이 어떻게 되셨는지. 그런데도 이런 선택을 하셨죠. 누구의 강요도 없었는데 말입니다. 그렇기에 목숨보다 소중하다는 말은 이해할 수 없는 부분입니다. But Xiao's rebuttal does make sense. 기계는 모를 테지. If you're human, of course. And assuming you aren't completely emotionless or weighing everything in your life by numbers. 소중한 것으로 인해 뜨겁게 피가 흐르는 느낌을 어떤 방법을 써서라도 어떤 형태여도 되찾고 싶다는 마음을 꿈, 희망, 가치관 인간을 움직이고 살아가게 하는 그 모든 단어 소중하다는 의미는 이루 말할 수 없을 만큼 거대하지만 단순하지. For those non-humans here, let me provide you with an analogy. Assume that in the next day, Project Moon goes bankrupt. Steam stops selling their games, and there's no way to obtain them legitimately anymore. However, word of a third game is spreading around, a half-developed one that leaked. It's spreading around on sites, and there's a 50% chance there's a virus in it. Would you download and play that third game? That was a really bad analogy, never mind. What I'm trying to say is that most humans are inherently sentimental. If a close one gave you something before they passed on, you would likely cherish that item, almost to an unreasonable extent. Here, that sentimental item would be Lowell's book, but Angela doesn't understand that. 그렇게 말해도 허망한 삶일 뿐이야. 존재 이유를 위해 스스로 죽음을 자초한다고? 결국 미약한 희망을 품고 있어도 죽음 앞에서는 부질없어질 뿐. 과연 네 알량한 마음가짐 하나로 상황이 변할까? 마음가짐이 상황을 바꾸지 않는다고? 당연하다. 희망이라고 앞이 보일까? 그저 밝기만 한 것일까? 희망은 만질 수 없는 걸 만지고 닿을 수 없는 것에 닿고 볼수 없는 걸 보게 한다. This is a message that is actually quite prevalent in a lot of Project Moon media. Even against inconceivable odds, humans still struggle and attempt to overcome them. That's what Xiao's speech is about. And it's what you've done time and time again. Whenever the world itself seems to be against you, the fact that you've made it this far reaffirms Xiao's message. Unfortunately, this doesn't last long.
People always said that Xiao was strong, someone who was determined, someone who would never waver. They were wrong. One by one, Xiao's allies fall before her, each death further faltering her. Before long, all that's left is Miris and Xiao, who soon retreat from battle. And it's revealed why. Miris had dragged Xiao out with him. Pujangim,比较。啊，지금의部长님은저하나도막아내지못하십니다。저그상대하는데필요한것이분노하지만그정도가지나치면자신에게돌아오는독이됩니다칼날이어디로향하는지보지못한다면피를흘리는건자신이
난 그렇게 생각하지 않아. 인간은 혼자서 살아갈 수 없다. 그렇게 된다면 금방 죽어버리고 말 거야. 다른 누군가가 필요해. 그래, 내가 살려줄 사람. 그리고 내가 길을 쓰고 살아야 하는 이유가 되어줄 사람. 내가 곁에 있음으로써 다른 누군가가 살아갈 수 있고 그 사람이 죽지 않을 수 있음과 동시에 나 역시 죽어서는 안 된다. 너희를 지키며 나 또한 지키는 방법. 내가 죽어서는 안 된다. 나를 챙기는 것이 곧 주위를 챙기는 것. 미안하다. 제 감정을 못 이겨 올곧게 이끌지 못했구나. 내게 그리고 모두에게 사과하는 건 이번이 마지막일 거야. 사실은 두렵고 그렇기에 가끔 잘못된 길로 갈수 있어. 하지만 굳세게 나아가면 끝내 옳은 길로 갈수 있겠지. 앞이 안 보이는 거지. 길이 없는 것은 아니니. And with that, the two of them enter the library for one final stand. Inevitably, Miris passes on. 전부 죽었구나. 아무도 남아 있지 않아. 이곳에서 너희는 끝까지 나와 함께 싸웠고, 그리고 사라졌지. 혼자 남아 있는 모습이 학력 유해하기에 그지 없구나. 어둠밖에 없다. 앞이 보이지 않아. 어디로 나아가야 할까? 발을 내딛을 수 있는 용기는. 어디에 서울까? 너희는 대체 무엇을 그리 끝까지 믿었나? 이길 수 있다는 희망. 굳센 지도자. 혹은 책을 얻겠다는 목적. 안타깝게도 지금은 대답을 들을 수가 없구나. 하지만 생을 위해 숨이 잠시 머무르고 다시 돌아가기 위해 흩어지듯. 언젠가 다시 너희를 만나 물을 날이 오겠지. 또 너인가? 끈질기게도 말을 거는군. 난 내가 스스로 불러온 절망에 주저앉고 두려워하지 않겠다. 인간이. 그리고 내가 극복하지 못할 건 없어. 참고 견뎌 굳세게 나아가면 최상의 결과에 도래할 것이라 믿고 있다. 정말 순수하게 믿고 있어. 아니야. 그런 것에 주저앉을 필요 없어. 절망이 없다면 희망 또한 필요 없어져. 희망이 있기에 두려움이 생기지만 두려움이 있기에 용기가 존재하고 이 모든 게 없다면 삶이 없다. 살아야 할 이유가 없는 것과 마찬가지니 내가 어떻게 이 생동함을 느끼지 않겠는가. 여전히 난 나를 위해 싸울 것이다. 나를 위해 목숨 바친 동료들을 무시하겠다는 게 아니야. 아니, 어쩌면 내가 여기서 너희 때문에 주저앉는 것이 무시하는 행위일 수도 있지. 네 말은 끝까지 내 마음에 들지 않는군. 홀로 선 나무는 숲을 이룰 수 없다라. 재밌는 이야기야. 비록 혼자여도 밤은 찾아온다. 그리고 새벽이 오지 않는 밤은 없지. 한낱 사라질 별 따위가 떠오르는 태양의 빛을 이길 수 있을까? 각오해라. 오늘 도시의 별 하나가 질 테니. And with those words, Seo confronts the library one last time. Truly alone. I don't want to make this the norm, so don't expect me to do this too often. But I know this is in my top 3 songs from Library of Rina, so I'm pretty biased. I'll try to cover it as best as I can, but lyrics always tend to be interpreted in different manners. Note that these are my takes. Most of you likely hold different views on certain lyrics, so let me know what you guys think. This song is a testament to Xiao's metal. It's pretty evident that it's supposed to be a representation of Xiao's sorrow and grief but not in the same way as the others we get Millie songs of. This pain and misery doesn't stall or introduce negative changes to Xiao's character. 
Instead, it accelerates her positive development. This is what Iron Lotus is truly about. Multiple times throughout the song, Cell laments several decisions she's made up to this point. How she selfishly brought those of her section along. How she may have had a hand in their deaths. How she never told the world how she felt before he left. But these regrets don't hold her character back, even though they seem to at several moments. Instead, she overcomes those feelings and stands against the library, truly alone and ironclad. I know, I really, really want to do an in-depth analysis on Iron Lotus to be honest. This barely scratched the surface of some of its themes. I didn't even begin to talk about any speculation whatsoever, and I didn't even get the chance to bring up the Chinese candy and stuff. But this video is long enough as is, so we'll leave it as that. Here's the thing, even with Xiao's transformation and insane growth in strength, she's not fighting you expecting to win, you know? Xiao's page reads, And I plan to reunite with you soon. I want to tell you that I no longer have shame for the path I've chosen, and that I have finally freed myself from the guilt. She's not going to go down without a fight, but she very much has considered the possibility that she would lose. No matter what happens, if she were to come out victorious obtaining all that's left of her cherished one, or if she were to lose and be booked herself, she feels no shame or guilt for taking the steps that she did. She has no regrets. After all, she was able to choose her own fate, wasn't she? Thanks for watching. Make sure to visit again, yeah? See you guys later.